Welcome everyone to part two of the weekly q and I did part one already that is up on the channel. So after you watch this one, if you're like, hey, I asked a question and you didn't answer it, it might be in part one, so you might want to check that out. Um, and as always, if you want to participate in future Q&A videos, make sure you follow the show on Twitter and why don't you smash the subscribe button while you're at it. Let's go ahead and get to these questions, see how many we can get to in part two here. At killink underscore Mukahi to ask, which one of these characters is the best? Bret Hart in 1997, The Tribal Chief, or Thugonomics John Cena? This is a fucking really good question. Um, you know what? You get a foul for that question. Love all three of those characters. Um, and yeah, I know many of you might say, well, I know you've always talked about how much you loved rapping thugonomics John Cena. I did, and I will never apologize for that. He's a fucking fantastic character. Um, but he would be third on my list. And I know a lot of you are going to point to uh, the tribal chief, you know, pro wrestling's number one baby face today. And you're going to assume as, you know, one of the head of the table's biggest cheerleaders, obviously I'm not in summer's class in terms of being a Roman fangirl or fanboy, um, that I would make him number one, but I wouldn't. It has to be Team Canada Bret Hart in 97. Because, well, you could, you could get behind John and you could believe in Roman like you knew in the cockles of your heart that this was truly Bret Hart. Like, it was such a departure and change from who he had been presented as before. The whining, the bitching, the pissing, the moaning. You know, at this time where the WWF was dramatically changing throughout that entire year, like, he kind of mirrored that change. And I'll bring along, yeah, are you fucking kidding me? I'm going to take Team Canada Bret Hart in 97. I bet none of you thought I was going to fucking say that. At DeMarcus Flowers, do you believe Vince McMahon will sell the WWE? If he sells it, it's because he's trying to get his ass entirely out of the business. If he still wants to do it, I can't see a way that he would want to sell the company and still be in charge because he wouldn't ultimately be in charge because he would have another master. And the one thing that we know above all else that Vince loves is complete and total autonomy and control. So if he does sell, it's because he's fucking over it. He's ready to retire and you know let, let, let whoever buys him, Disney, NBC, somebody sit there and figure out what to do with Shane and Stephanie and Hunter and so forth. I think it could happen someday. I mean, you're talking about a dude that's what now, almost 46, 76 years of age? Like, there has to be an exit strategy for him and an exit strategy for him for the company's sake. Uh, at Morse 2X, Jeff, if you were booker of WWE right now, who would go over the Fiend or Bobby Lashley? The fucking Bobby Lashley. Why would the Fiend even be a consideration? They bitched out the Fiend for fucking Alexa Bliss. Are you kidding me? <laughs> At K underscore Nokaj, if Snap, Crackle, and Pop are replaced as the cover boys for Rice Krispies, why would Psycho Sid be the best replacement? <laughs> oh, I think it's got to be this. Snap for Psycho Sid's leg. Crackle. <laughs> Sid Cara tearing his patella tendon and pop for Dino Bravo because banga banga he is dead. <laughs> um, let's see here who we got next. C Trotter 1197. Out of these three Taker matches, which one was the absolute worst? Him versus Underfaker at SummerSlam 94, him versus Roman at 33, or him versus Goldberg at Super Showdown 2019. Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh. Oh. I think it's him and Roman at Mania 33 because that's the event that he's synonymous with and they main evented. Yeah, that was, that was god awful and bad. I'm sure some of you might say they actually watched him and Goldberg at Super Showdown 2019, might say that show, but I didn't watch that show, so I can't really opine. But him and Roman at WrestleMania 33, like at least I can say Undertaker versus Underfaker, like at least there was a gimmick there. Oh, yeah. Um, at Fork 34, I know you're not really a big John Cena fan, but does his potential return excite you at all? Let me Let me get this straight. The one guy that I want Roman Reigns, our tribal chief, the head of the table, to face at SummerSlam 
is no other, none other than John Cena because this time the dynamics are different and would go entirely differently. Yeah, of course I'd be excited for him to make a potential return to be served up on a platter to Roman at SummerSlam. Why the hell wouldn't I fucking be? You know, why wouldn't I be? Oh, yeah. A return for that in that context? Absolutely, that would excite me. Now, realizing that John Cena will sit there and try to do his, oh, I don't really care bullshit. Um, our tribal chief will set him straight real fucking quick. At Craig HNIC, Kobe Bryant's one thing that he has that MJ doesn't have is his Oscar win. I think the one way that LeBron can top that is wrestling Dolph Ziggler in a King of the Flop match at WrestleMania. <laughs> win. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. La Flop James. La Flop James. All right, you get a foul for that. I have to. I wonder if LeBron would leave like mid-match if it wasn't going his way. <laughs> La flop, James. <laughs> yeah, Jay Z is overrated. Which feud would be better in their prime? CM Punk versus Stone Cold, Hulk Hogan versus Super Cena. Or 2003 Hollywood Rock versus 2014 Daniel Bryan. I gotta confess, Hollywood Rock versus Daniel Bryan sounds really stupid, in my opinion. Uh, Punk versus Stone Cold is probably the most appealing of the three because you can go with the straight edge shit and the no drinking and Punk could hold his own on the mic with Austin. Like, I think that works. Hulk Hogan versus Super Cena, yeah, maybe, but. I'd take Punk versus Stone Cold. At Troy the Gamer HD, push Barry Fire... Barry, no, I'm not going to answer this question because you a-holes always want to do the same shit. Push Fire Barry. And you got cheese. Is it going to be... <coughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Is it going to be the American cuck, Cody Rhodes? Is it Sounder, the Memphis mid-card piece of crap? Shut fucking up! I'm not going to answer that question because fuck it. And you're such a smart ass, I see here, you posted it twice. How dare you? And even in like your Twitter profile, you claim to be a Roman Reigns fan. How dare you, sir? 50 Hail Hunters for you. Everything that's on the Hunter, the Hurst, and the Helmsley. At Surgeon D, how epic would Scott Steiner explaining the physics and math behind Sid's big Buddha doom be? Fucking fantastic. <laughs> you take his 75% chance and add 66 and two-thirds percent and for his leg it spells disaster at sin. <laughs> at Polly underscore Paul 412 is it me or is Kwame Brown a better promo than the majority of the wrestlers today? It's not you because it's true. Stephen Hilt 92 does the recent releases on Wednesday confirm the rumors that WWE is up for sale? I certainly wouldn't dismiss it because otherwise it makes absolutely no fucking business sense and I even think in the sense of trying to go up for sale, I still don't think it makes any sense. Um, at Power Spy in 1, if Smokey was alive today, who do you think would be his favorite wrestlers of the modern era? Well, obviously Mark motherfucking Henry, Sheamus, um, Bobby Lashley, MVP, like, pretty obvious to see. He'd probably support Roman from a distance, but he would let Summer have her lane. At Fulia Georgian 1, AEW succeeded in only two years to be the worst wrestling company at booking big guys. Which is, was the best company at booking them? Obviously, in history, it's got to be WWF. Um, <laughs> let's be clear, though. It's not like WWE in recent years has done a bang-up job with their big guys, either. At 35, Robert, 16, if Jeff Hardy never had his demons, meaning he probably never leaves WWE, how many more world titles does he win? Would he have been one of the post Lesnar guys like Edge, Orton, Cena, and Batista? I don't think he would have been quite at that level. I would have been, think he would have been one step down. So he'd have gotten some world title runs, but he would have, excuse me, he would have been behind the fortunate four. Um, at Dave G, one, two, three, underscore four, five, six. What are three things you would do if you were in charge of WWE? Three things that I would do if I was in charge of WWE. <sighs> 
Number one, force Vince out. Now you got to give me some autonomy to, to make whatever decision I need to make. Number two, get rid of the third hour of Raw. I do those two things, absolutely. You say, well, you lose some revenue with that. It might be worth losing the revenue for the greater good. Sometimes you have to consider trade-offs and risks, and um, I think it certainly would be worth it. Number three, off-season. Some type of off-season. The running 52 weeks a year shit, like people get burnt out on it after a while, and you're not creating interesting, compelling enough television to sit there and run 12 months in a row all the time every year. Those would be the three things I would change. At PKK Dakota, who do you want to be Mark Henry's first opponent in AEW? Fuck it. They're going to bring in all the WWE guys. Might as well be him and Big Show one more time. Uh, let's see here. At Craig HNIC, do you miss bra and panties matches? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Well, they weren't really that big of a deal to me. Usually they featured white girls, so it just doesn't really hum with me. But if you told me like a, um, if if you told me it was like Jade Cargill versus Red Velvet in a, a, a bra and thong match, like obviously I'd fucking be excited about that. But um, eh, maybe a little, but not too much. Uh, little DJ Boy, if the King of Ring pay-per-view were held this year, who would you have win it? Let's not pick Roman so we have more creativity. No, I wouldn't burn it on Roman. Roman's already the fucking world champion. Why would I burn it on him? But who would I have win King of the Ring? Honestly, you know who I would have had it win it? Probably Jimmy Uso. Because you could set up to him and Roman and do it effectively. Doing that. Um, at Elite Guy 7 thoughts on the New Japan product and who is your favorite from their roster? Roster. Ishii is my favorite New Japan wrestler beyond question. Um, I'm not a fan of their product. Just not for me. So why well, I really don't care to watch it or talk about it because, again, it's just not for me. Um, let's see here. At Delacross BEBF, who is the only person worthy of dethroning Roman Reigns and why isn't it Brad Maddox? You live beef mode alone. <laughs> Stop trying to ask me about Roman's reign ending. It doesn't need to. At H Review 73, besides the Katie Vick storyline, what other wrestling storylines were do you think were some of Kane's worst? Oh God. Was it the lead of pregnancy? Uh this stupid shit with him, Neve Torres and Cena. Um he was in some clunkers over the years. Uh but that, that Katie Vick one was probably the worst. Um at Michael Gavinelli, one, do you think Tony Khan is a businessman or a fanboy of professional wrestling? I think it's a little bit of both. He's a money mark. I don't think he's a terrible businessman, at least not from what I've observed or what I've seen. But there's no doubt he's a mark for professional wrestling. That's not fundamentally wrong. He's a fanboy. But I think that's also obviously true. Um, at Mid Carter J, who would win in a TLC match? Triple T and RVD, Mr. Rout and Christian, or the Schleg Daddy and the Memphis Midcard piece of crap. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. Probably let... I think we let Mr. Rout go over. Let him have his moment in the sun. I'm sure as fuck not working with the Memphis Midcard piece of crap. Um, at the Team Forward, which one was better? Double or Nothing or WrestleMania for me? Ooh. WrestleMania slightly. Um, at Rick Styles 1985, who do you think will be the top stars leading WWE into the 2030s? That's a decade from now. The hell am I supposed to know? The chances are the vast majority of the folks that are on the roster now won't be there in five years, let alone ten. At Carter from Mars, do you think Vince and WWE favor superstars who are conservative Republicans? If not, when do you think he, they loosen their grip on it? Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. It could just be naturally a product of the talent that gets into the business. Like maybe they have more conservative leanings. Um, I don't think they would refuse to push somebody because they weren't a Trumper or a mag mega follower or something like that. But I, I think he does favor them a little bit. Sure. Um, let's see here. At the Mox guy. 
Is it really worth getting headshots by the mafia for smoking cigarettes? It wasn't smoking cigarettes, it was smuggling cigarettes. And it wasn't just getting headshots, like he got 18 total shots, including the ones to his head and his entire body. But fuck Dino Bravo, why? Because he's dead. <laughs> uh, at Magnificent Matt, if you were a tag team death match against the Memphis Midcard, you know what? You guys gotta stop asking me the stuff about the same couple of people. The shtick is getting old. I would, to answer your question, if I had to sit there and pick somebody as a tag team partner, I'd pick Nick Gage because he's fucking alive. You know why? Because New Jack is dead, unfortunately. New Jack was alive, even with half a working ticker. I'm taking New Jack, but he's dead, so give me Nick Gage. Um, at Finlay Puffin, uh, why can't AEW consistently draw more than 2,000 fans in Jacksonville? Uh... I mean, how big is Daly's Plaza anyways? How big is the capacity there? I don't even know. So I don't know that I can intelligently answer that question. Um, at Coach Hamden, like this is a little different Cody-related question. How disappointed are you that Cody has turned into another he who must not be named and at what odds did you see this coming? It was at least 50-50 odds, probably greater than 50-50 odds. Um, disappointed? Yes. Surprised? Fuck no. Um... At Real Durock, what was your fondest SpinnerNet 1 video or memory of his? I missed that dude. Oh, fuck. Remember what was it back like early 2011, the whole shit where he was having a car issue and he was talking about uh, he was looking for help for fucking to get his car fixed. And I remember wrestling Jesus at the rap song. I need money for my car, bitches. Because I can't take the bus because it's too far, bitches. That's probably my favorite memory of all. <laughs> oh, God. Who else do you guys miss that maybe have been watching wrestling YouTube for a few years? Like, who do you guys miss? I saw recently somebody brought up a blast from the past. And yes, I miss this motherfucker for sure. Like, you you gotta sit there and wonder what the hell happened to Reggie Tiller. Time to get regified, baby. <laughs> Uh, Jack asked, do you believe that sex appeal should return to wrestling? Yes, yeah, sex always sells, so why the fuck wouldn't you include it? Um, at History Guy 007, if Macho Man made amends with the WWE in the 2000s, which would you have, story would you have preferred, Rock or Triple H? Oh man, are you talking about some of the real life elements you could have incorporated with God? Oh, that's the fucking match right there. That's the, that's the match right there. Um... Alex asked, do you think the Attitude Era was guilty in the sense that it spawned the idea of bending reality fiction to the point where wrestlers act out of character in the respective storylines and social media interviews, completely breaking your immersion for the most part? Not necessarily. Like, obviously, that became a much more prevalent thing and grew during the Attitude Era, but it's more about the, the way the characters are presented and the way the characters perform and the stories that are told and the way things are done. That That's what matters in a whole hell of a lot more and kills the immersion. Um, let's see here. I think that's it. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm over the questions for this week. Uh, thank you, everyone, excuse me, for submitting your questions for this week's q and I know I didn't get to every one of them, but I tried to get as many of them as I had patience to get through. So thank you guys for all of that. Got the King of the Ring 94 review coming up soon. I get to talk about the greatness of Art Donovan on commentary. How much does that guy weigh? 